Hi there, my name is Jason and I'm going to walk you through how to do uh, the first part here of case number one of the first assignment. So let's have a look at uh, the basic setup to this question. It says um, it's Rocky Health and Fitness Club in the file surveyresults.xls. So I've got that file set up here for us to look at. In that file, you'll find the results of over 1,200 questionnaires sent out by Rocky Health and Fitness Club to its members. And so we've got different columns, A, B, C, and so on, all the way down to H, where they're, for each one of these uh, members of the fitness club, they're keeping track of um, different results from a survey. So, for example, in column A, it says weight and exercise equipment satisfaction. And you'll see down here that they they have a numbering code. Five is very satisfied all the way down to one, which is very dissatisfied. So if you look at the data file, you'll see that the numbers in that first column A, weight and exercise equipment satisfaction, these are all anywhere between one and five. So that shows each individual, um, each individual person or members particular satisfaction rating. And each row here each one of these rows represents a member. And so not only do we have their satisfaction rating for the weights and exercise equipment, we also have their club staff satisfaction, um, what they think about the exercise programs and so on. Uh, later on, we get things like um, how many years have they been with a club? One is their gender. Now, gender is listed as either one or two, but you can see if we go back to the sheet here that um, there is an indicator that one is male for the gender variable and two is female. Okay, so we also have number of visits per week and the age of the customer. So we have a lot of different variables. You can think of a variable in statistics, or at least in your class, you can always think of a variable as being um, a, like a question. If we've asked on a survey, if we've asked people one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different questions, so what is your satisfaction rating of the weight and exercise equipment? Or how many years have you been with the club? So if we ask people different questions, every question is going to create a new variable. So we have the responses to eight different questions, so we have eight different variables. Now the reason that I bring up this concept of variables is because properly answering this question, whether it's part one or anywhere throughout the rest of this case, two, three, or four, in order to answer any of this properly, you have to know what type of variable you're dealing with. And when I say a type of variable, what I mean specifically is this. In, in the first couple of chapters in your textbook, you're introduced to different scales of measurement. Now, scales of measurement are broken up into three main groups. You might have seen this in, um, in a high school statistics class. You might have seen more groups than what you're going to see here, but this is all that we have to worry about for this class. We've got nominal, we've got ordinal, and we have interval. Sometimes there's another type called ratio, but in your class we're not going to worry about that. Everything is going to be nominal, ordinal, or interval. And these have really simple definitions, and so it's easy to categorize data as to whether it is nominal or ordinal or interval. Nominal data is data that is categories. So if I ask somebody, um, what's your favorite color? That would be nominal data. If I ask somebody, what's your gender? That's a category that they fit into. It's nominal data. The other types of data have a little bit more going on than simply just categorizing people into different groups. For example, ordinal data it's still categories, but they're categories with um, with a possible. They don't have to be in order, but uh, they have a possible order to them. Okay, so let me give an example where I can distinguish nominal versus ordinal. If I was uh, going to Tim Hortons and buying food for everybody, and I said, uh, what kind of sandwich do you want? And the first person said, um, chicken salad and the second person said, I want a ham sandwich. And the third person said, I don't want a sandwich, I want a donut. So these would just be different categories that people fit into. This would be nominal data. But if instead I said, okay, I'm only buying coffee, what size of coffee would you like? 
and some people said I want a small other people said I want a medium maybe nobody wants a large but somebody wants um, an extra extra large or something like that and then maybe the last person um, wants an extra small so these are not in order but there is a potential order for example medium is bigger than small extra extra large is bigger than medium small is bigger than extra small so there is a built-in order to these categories this would be ordinal data now the last one interval stands apart very easily from the first two the last one interval data is numbers if I ask you a question where you give me a numerical answer like if I ask you what is your weight what is your height how many kilometers or how far do you live from the school or how much time on average do you spend watching TV every day those would be numerical answers and so interval is going to be a number for an answer but we've already seen that uh, we had uh, gender give us a one or a two depending on whether somebody was male or female so categories sometimes show up in the form of numbers so instead of saying that interval is simply just numbers and leaving it at that where that might be confusing I'm going to be a little more specific I'm gonna say interval data is made up of numerical measurements measures or measurements or counts so if I ask you a question where you answer with a number that is a measurement or a count that means we have interval data so if I ask you how much do you weigh you would measure how much you weigh if I ask you um, how many televisions do you own you would count how many televisions you own Th these would be interval data but if I said um, write down your gender one if you're male two if you're female well you're not measuring anything and you're not counting anything you're simply just categorizing yourself into male or female so that would be nominal data now these um, the reason that we're going to do this the reason that we need to know what type of variable you have is because these different types of variables lead to different approaches in terms of how we're going to answer every one of these questions let's go back to um, let's go back to the question itself in question number one it says use proper statistical techniques which is tables or charts okay um, and the appropriate numerical values to describe the following key variables so we've got overall club satisfaction years of the club number of visitors and the age of customers so we have four different variables and we're expected to create tables charts and numerical values well look at how this works if I have nominal data the table actually let me put this up here the table that I would be interested in would be a frequency distribution and the graph that I'm going to be working with am I supposed to do graphs let me double check that I'm supposed to do graphs uh, tables appropriate charts okay to describe these actually we don't have to have graphs but uh, they did say well charts I guess actually yes charts is where they're asking me to create a graph or a chart so um, I'm just thinking about it using the wrong word so a graph or a chart the appropriate graph or chart for nominal data is going to be the bar chart now you might be thinking one out of pie chart they do that in my textbook pie charts are for nominal nominal data but pie charts are when we're asked a very specific kind of question when we're asked for relative frequencies and they they never mentioned anything about relative frequencies here so I'm not going to be interested in doing a pie chart it's a bar chart that I'm working with for nominal data and then finally my numerical uh, how did they put it um, let's see numerical values this is where uh, chapter 4 comes in where we talk about things like the mean the median the mode uh, variance standard deviation all these sorts of things so which of those would be appropriate I'll just call these actually uh, statistics because that's what they are statistics 
When it comes to, to statistics, the mean, the median mode, and so on, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, all this sort of stuff, there's only one for nominal data that makes any sense to report, and that is the mode. So if you're dealing with nominal data, you have a really easy time in terms of reporting the appropriate statistics. There's only one appropriate statistic, and that's the mode. Now, ordinal data is kind of interesting in your course because even though they give it a definition, they, they show you how to distinguish ordinal data from the other types, we are never shown what the proper table is, what the proper graph is, what the proper statistics are. Instead, in your textbook and in your course, they're very, they're very specific. Ordinal data is to be treated the same as nominal data. So ordinal and nominal data will always have a frequency distribution as being the main table, um, a bar chart as being the main chart, and the mode is... Uh, actually, there's, there is one thing I could add to ordinal data. I could, because there is an order to it, I could have a median. Okay, now if on the other hand I have interval data, then my table, my table is actually the same. My main table that I'm going to be dealing with is the frequency distribution. But when it comes to my chart, I'm not going to be working with a bar chart. Instead, I'm going to be working with a histogram. Now histograms and bar charts are very very similar to each other but there are some very important differences between them um, and these are the sorts of differences that they're going to be looking for um, when they're marking your paper to make sure you understood what the differences are this is where all the marks are going to be in understanding these differences so when we do our bar chart and our histogram I'll show you how they're different. Now finally when it comes to the statistics there's a big difference there. Um, for interval data you are able to work out the mean. Mathematically, the mean will make sense for interval data. It wouldn't for this for ordinal and it wouldn't for nominal. The median also makes sense to work out for interval data. So does the mode. Uh, for that matter, so does the variance and the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation. Um, all of these are the main things that you cover in uh, in chapter 4 and so all of these will apply to any time we're reporting on interval data. Uh, maybe I could even throw the range in here and I think that that really covers everything we would ever want to know about our interval data. Okay so we've got sort of a roadmap here as to how to approach different sorts of variables and they did mention four different variables that we're supposed to be dealing with so let's have a look at these four different variables. And here they are. Let's uh, zoom in on these a little bit more. Overall club satisfaction. Now, they mentioned earlier on how to handle satisfaction. Five is very satisfied, four is satisfied, and so on. This is a situation where numbers are being associated with categories. So this is not interval data. I'm not measuring or counting anything. Um, instead, this would be ordinal data. Overall club satisfaction its categories that do have an order to them. For example, very satisfied, that's number five, that's more satisfied than number four, which is satisfied. Satisfied, number four, is more satisfied than neutral, and so on. Just like the small, medium, large example of the coffees that I was, that I was talking about. So for overall club satisfaction, this is ordinal data. So overall club satisfaction, we would be putting here with um, this type of approach. Satisfaction. Okay, so we're going to do a frequency distribution, we're going to do a bar chart for overall club satisfaction, and we're going to be able to look at the mode and the medium, because it is ordinal data. Now what about uh, the next one? My next one is years with a club. Now you either measure or you count years, so that's interval data. Part C, the number of visits per week, that's something you count. You count how many times you visit per week, so that's interval data. Age of customers, you count your age. 
Um, you might think you measure your age, but really people just count. If I ask you, if I asked you how many, how old are you, you're not going to give me a measurement in time, like right down to the second. Instead, you're basically just counting how many birthdays you've had. So, um, if you're 20, that means you had 20 birthdays. It doesn't mean you're exactly 20 years old. But regardless, it's a number where you've counted. So all three of these are interval. So years with a club, number of visits, and age. So years visits and age, these all belong here. We're going to be doing a frequency distribution, we're going to be doing a histogram, and we're going to be doing all of these things in terms of our actual reported numerical statistics. So really there's going to be two types of answers to this first part. Um, we'll start off with um, working with that ordinal data, with uh, creating our table and our chart and our statistics um, for the overall club satisfaction. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to work with interval data to get a frequency distribution, a histogram, which is going to be different from a bar chart. And then, of course, we've got a lot more work to do with um, getting all of these numerical statistics done here. Okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, getting some of that stuff done.